The goal in this video is going to be to take simple harmonic motion and tie it in with the wave equation. So students are faced with this wave equation and they do see it in numerous places. So, you know, as you're studying mathematics, you might run into sines and cosines. You might study the actual equation itself. You might know what sine and a cosine does. But then you have almost a little bit of a detachment when you see this in the physics side. Now, it isn't actually anything different, but we do have some meaning now behind what these coses and sines are, and we wanna be able to explain what the A in this equation is that you see on the screen, what the omega actually is, and what the phi is. So if you go back to simple harmonic motion, I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about simple harmonic motion and springs, for example, okay, that pattern of going back and forth and that is related to Hooke's law. So in a simple explanation, so simple harmonic motion is periodic oscillations. So they are continuously going over and over and over again around some kind of an equilibrium position. Very often that equilibrium position is assumed to be zero. And that is caused by a restoring force. So like a spring in Hooke's law, so it restores the force, which is proportional to the displacement. So I'm going to put up a link up above there, which ties in the kind of Hooke's law and springs and into simple harmonic motion. And I'm going to assume that you are familiar with it. So as we jump in here, so where exactly does this X of T come from? Well, let's take a look first at a simulation. So here's a simulation where you have the red ball, which is, as you can see there, it's just basically going around the circle. So clearly it's periodic. Okay, so periodic meaning that it goes all the way around. So that would have been two pi uh, in terms of the angles all the way through. And then it repeats and then repeats. The blue ball, okay, and the green ball that you see there are just the X components and the Y components of that red ball, which is going all the way around. So they have exactly the same period. And in fact, in Hooke's law and springs and tying it into simple kind of harmonics, I have used this very similar pattern to try to explain to you what's happening. So you can imagine that that blue ball is like a spring going back and forth, back and forth, where the restoring force is trying to, you know, hold it back or push it away. Now, what turns out to be important in this particular figure, so if I kind of stop this, okay, as we're going to go through. So, that so here's our simulation, but it's paused, it's frozen in time. And now let's take a look and break down all of the actual components that you have. So if you take this, you will notice that you can certainly create a triangle out of here as this is paused in time. Okay, so this triangle that we have, I'm going to shift it out of the way. And we know that in this particular triangle, so we have this radius okay, of that particular triangle. And that would have been like your hypotenuse that you have. And it is broken down into its components. So we know that we would have an X component, but I'm going to now throw in that this X component, of course, depends on time because this is frozen in time. So there's really would have been just X, okay, which is the displacement okay, away from the X axis okay, that we have. And then our Y component would have been just simply Y of T. And these two components that you have are the green ball. So this is the actual distance that you have in there. So that would have been the Y distance over here. And this would have been the X. And that particular X is again, dependent on time. So as this continues on, okay, obviously those X's and Y's change. And hence we need to know, okay, so where exactly are they located? And this is tied into that simple harmonic motion and then also towards waves. Because if you plot this, plot this out, this actually would look like a wave going back and forth, back and forth, or in a circular pattern, okay? So meaning all the way around a circle and then all the way around a circle and so on. So it turns out that this X component that we have is the component, okay, that you have seen right there. And that is typically known as your wave equation. All right. So where does this equation come from? Why is it the way that it is? Well, so let's take a step back. And as we do take a step back, I want to recall for us that the cos 
of an angle in a triangle is just equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And within here, so if we take our triangle, so which is frozen in time, now of course this will work for any angle okay, that we have. So if we assume that this is our angle right there, now our radius in here is just equal to the amplitude A, because that's the maximum that you have, that as you're swinging around, so as the red ball keeps going, it's actually at an amplitude of A, and A we've set to one, at least for our simulation in here. So if I have that, then this becomes your adjacent, okay, over your hypotenuse, your hypotenuse is A. In fact, your adjacent that we have, um, that is just X of T in here. So that is just coming straight from right there. And this is equal to cos of the angle. So if I rearrange this, then this is going to be X of T is equal to A multiplied by cos of angle. Well, that looks exactly like this, where your angle is just equal to omega t plus phi. That is your angle. And that angle is this angle right here. And that is just your theta as you're going through. So that particular theta okay, that you have in there is omega t plus phi. So now you have a sense that, oh, okay, well, this equation isn't anything different than what we had for you know triangles and moving around okay a unit circle now i say unit circle okay a reminder okay for those who want to recall the unit circle put a link up above there so now this leaves us the question okay so what exactly is this omega and then why do we have this phi well so first what i'm going to explain is actually the phi which is a little bit easier to explain so that phi is most of the time assumed to be zero. Now, zero, okay, which is, might be in radians or just zero degrees. And what that means is that you would be starting, so this particular ball in terms of its starting position would have been over here. So that's like moving the blue ball over here. And then the green ball would have been starting from zero. So this would have meant that phi was equal to zero because what that is saying is that at T, equal to zero, so notice if you set t equal to zero, then this whole term is gone, and really all you have is cos of phi. So what that is telling us is what is the angle at the starting position? That's what phi means, and often that phi is known as the phase angle that you have. So it's just a shift that you have in terms of your starting position. So if it starts from here, then phi is equal to zero. But of course, if it's going to start from here, then the phi is going to be whatever angle, okay, that I have over here. Or if it starts from over here, it doesn't matter where you are, you will have a starting position. That is your phase angle. So it's just a phase in terms of a shift. But most often, okay, you might run into this phase just to be equal to zero. And then this equation is just cos of omega t, where your omega t is your angle that you have dependent on t. So now you know what this phi is in here. Now, if you know this, well, now let's jump into this. So this omega t is equal to your angle that you have where your ball is located or where, okay, as you're doing your oscillations back and forth, where are you with respect to, okay, some kind of a starting position. Now that omega t is known as the angular velocity. Now angular velocity means that it's the speed that something is moving all the way around. And now it's an angular velocity because it's the angle that constantly changes. Your radius doesn't really change, your amplitude, okay, as you're going through that you have. So that radius is not changing, but your angle is changing. So that's you have, now you have a, an angle which is changing and now what angle do we have all the way around a circle? Well, it's 360 degrees, but we don't typically deal with degrees. We deal with radians, okay? Deja vu, okay, in terms of radians. So radians that you have 
Well, all the way, that 360 degrees that you are very familiar with for a circle is equal to 2 pi in radians. And therefore, okay, so what we would have is that your omega t is equal to 2 pi, so that's the total 360 degrees, but because it's an angular velocity, so how quickly it's moving, it's going to be related to the period, right? So one period, which is the time for one cycle. And now that should make sense to you because, okay, well, how fast am I moving for one full rotation, right? Or how fast am I moving, you know, for swinging back and forth as I'm oscillating on a spring or a pendulum or whatever it might be, which is your simple harmonic motion. So that is your angular velocity. So it's 2 pi times t, okay? And this, um, sorry, 2 pi divided by the period multiplied by t. Now, when you multiply this by t, so this is, might be in seconds, this of course might be in seconds so that it's the same unit, those will cancel, and then this will give you what your angle actually is. That will tell you this. So what you're adding is you're adding your starting position plus your, so you're adding two angles, where you started from, and then as you're moving along. If phi is equal to zero, then you know your angle that you have is just going to be equal to that. And all it's measuring is this. That is, so in this case I put theta, but that theta that you have is omega t plus your phi. So now you know exactly where this comes from. So if you know triangles, you know the definition of cos, it's very easy to be able to do that. And of course, you can do the same thing for y. So if you want the vertical y, well, of course, well, that would have been the sine. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You do the same exact trick, and then you will get your equation for y of t. And then the angles, they don't change. So they share the exact same angle. So hence, angle, angle, you're taking cos or sine. So this is of x and of y. And this is just the amplitude that you have. And now you can plot this out. Okay, so you can take this whole thing and plot it out. So here it is on the left hand side, I have the code, okay, for this, I mean, I will maybe set the phi equal to zero, okay, so that we're starting. And now if I plot this out, so this would have been our x value. So this is assuming that we're starting at an angle of zero. So notice cos of zero is going to be equal to one, or whatever amplitude that you have, you can certainly change the amplitude if you want wanted to. And now that is okay you have your t so this is your independent variable is time your dependent variable is x this is the location where you are on the x-axis um, so don't confuse with the x-axis in terms of the plot because the x-axis in terms of the plot is time for us now and then the y-axis is the dependent variable which is the location the position of your mass of the spring for instance and then if you want to know so i'm going to turn this off you want to know the y location well then that would be different so starting with phi of equal to zero well so that means sine of, of zero is zero and therefore your y location is going to start from zero and then it moves up and then down and notice the periodic wave like equation so when you plot both of them you can get your x and your y and now whatever it is that you study in physics you can now relate it back okay to these concepts as you're going through and what is really amazing uh, within here, if you do tie it into Hooke's Law and Springs and so on, you can find out actually what this period is dependent on the physics. And it, this will just depend on the mass and the K. K is the Hooke's constant. And I have derived that okay, um, period for you as well if you wanted to. All right, so this comes in to the end. I hope now you can relate it back. You can understand where the wave equation comes from, what the A stands for, which is amplitude, what the omega stands for, which is the angular velocity. Okay, so it's the angle and how it is changing, how quickly it's changing. And then the phi is basically your starting position that you have when t is equal to zero. And that's known as the phase angle that you have. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in a future one. Bye, everybody.